Today we'll talk about the different types of dry docks that are normally used for vessels for repairs, overhaul, maintenance. Um, and I will basically discuss three main types of dry docks. And I'll also show you some pictures which have been taken from the internet, but I have credited the people who have taken those pictures. These are not my pictures. So that's why sometimes I hesitate to use pictures, but uh, they are from the internet so that you guys can get a good idea of uh, the kind of dry dock we are talking about. So in dry docks, uh, ships under 15 years must be examined in a dry dock twice in a five year period and not more than three years may lapse between the dry dockings. Ships of 15 years or more must be examined in a dry dock in two yearly intervals with extension to two to five years when a suitable high resistance paint is applied to the underwater hull. The different types of dry dock will start with the careening dry dock. In this careening dry dock, vessel is run close ashore over a suitable beach at high water so that she is grounded at low water and healed over. I'll show you the photograph in the next slide. The time available for repair and maintenance is very limited in this kind of a dry dock. This method is still widely used but only for small crafts because it often exposes one side of the vessel for maintenance. So you can see here if this is uh, one of the pictures I got from the internet and uh, you can get an idea of what is it and why these days it cannot be used for big ships. It can only be used for small crafts. It's easy to work on the uh, one side of the vessel and if you some repairs are to be carried out. Then we have the heaving down dry dock where the vessel is heeled over by means of tackles set up between her masts and shore attachments or with another ship. Since in this case hull is waterborne and there is very little hull stress unless it touches the seabed, this method is also used only for small crafts. Unfortunately, I didn't have a picture of this dock. Then we have the floating cradle type of dry dock. This is used for small vessels and consists of a reinforced slipway on which is built a railway carrying a heavy cradle. The latter is run down the slipway into the water under the ship's keel and when the ship rests on the cradle, the two are hove up the slipway. All right. Then we move on to the floating type of dry dock. Now floating type and grieving dry docks are normally the dry docks that are used by the bigger ships or merchant ships. Now floating type of dry dock ensures that vessels center of gravity and docks center of gravity or rather dock center of buoyancy is in one line. This type of dry dock is a huge flat subdivided steel tank like a ship's double bottom. On the upper center line of which is a line of keel block. This forms the bottom of the dock which has no ends but high narrow sides which are also tanks. Both in the double bottom and sides are flooded so that the dock bottom is at the deeper draft than the ship's keel. Then the ship is floated over the dock center line and then water pumped dry until ship is clear of the water. To keep the dock properly trimmed, the ship's center of gravity must be vertically below the dock center of buoyancy. The two eventually form one floating craft. The dock master will require details regarding the ship's stability, trim and loading condition and may require any of to be changed. This is again a photograph of a floating type of dock that I have obtained from the internet. The plans of vessels which are required by the dry dock in such cases of like floating dry dock or any other dry docks are the shell expansion plans, the dry dock plan, the capacity plan, pipelines plan, the life saving appliances and firefighting appliances plan, the general arrangement plan, plans of area to survey, deck and tank plans as well as the dead weight plan. Finally, we talk about the graving dock. This is one which is excavated from the land and close to the sea or river by means of a floating caisson gates. The edge of the dock bottom beneath the gate is known as sill. The sides of the dock are terraced with concrete steps into which the shores are healed. Along the center line of the dock, huge blocks of timber are built into keel blocks. These blocks are tied together to prevent them from toppling or being tripped as the vessel is sewed or refloated. 
the dock is filled from the river water or sea water and the gate is open when the level of the water on both sides are coincident. So here is finally a picture of the graving type of dock. So again, like I said, uh, your vessel may go to normally a floating or a graving type of dock if you are on a normal merchant vessels, but smaller ships also use or smaller vessels rather also use the other types of dock, dry dock described in this video. I just try to keep these videos short and sweet so that you can get enough material for yourselves to answer the questions asked to you in the written exams or oral assessments. Uh, I, I try not to make these videos too long, otherwise it gets a bit boring for all of you. But of course, if you want to get more information, please feel free to study from other books and resources. I'm happy to give you some resources as well if you want me to. Alright guys, bye for now.